So we're going to rapid fire these questions so we can get you done somewhat on time. So number one, rapid fire. Julie, start first. Introduce yourself. Hi everyone, Julie Hoffman, Chair of Advocacy for American Diabetes Association, Desert Southwest. Hi, Ashley Chambers, Arizona Families for Vaccines, and the Director of Legal Affairs at our parent nonprofit, State Communities Coalition. Uh, Arizona Families for Vaccines is a state chapter. It's one of 11 across the country, and we are dedicated to advocating at the state house in our respective states against the misinformation about all vaccines and promoting legislation that increases access to vaccines, increases confidence in vaccines, and supports our healthcare workers, um, bioscience professionals, and public health professionals. All right, Christina Sabella, Executive Director with the National Alliance on Mental Illness. We're the largest mental health grassroots organization, also co-chair of the uh, Advocacy Committee for the Arizona Care and Family Coalition, a coalition of individuals and family members with lived experience. So you already shared this one, but just really quick, why are you a patient? How would I uh, uh, respond to the first one and the second one right away since we're rapid firing? Um, so I'm a patient advocate because my lived experience, as you heard, um, hearing hearing uh, young boys and girls come up to me and share their inspiration and hope for the future has been life-saving. Um, what's also been really hard in this field and one of the dif difficult struggles is not feeling heard. Um, and also losing a lot of peers to suicide because it's, it's a hard fight to fight um, and not everyone can do it. I think there's a huge lack of uh, patient voices at the Capitol. There's a lot of legislators who are making big decisions for people's lives without any input from those actual people who it's going to affect. So I um, am dedicating my career to that, to making sure that individuals know how easy it is to get involved at the Capitol. There's a big misconception that it's difficult or that it's um, intimidating, but I think with the right people by your side, it's not. And your voices are so important and they need to be there because this is your life and you shouldn't let politics get in the way of that. And I am an advocate because of this beautiful young lady sitting in the second row over here. My daughter, Taylor, um, was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when she was a year and a half old. Um, at that time, was the youngest patient in Tucson to be diagnosed. And we had a brand new insulin to market. Um, was on four insulins, but I got to use... Um, a drug now that we've seen in headlines across the country um, that's relevant to the insulin affordability. So uh, having been mom uh, and advocate over the last 26 plus years, I now have turned that into a career. And like um, some of the panelists here today and some others in the room, um, all work together at the Capitol um, and with organizations like AC Bio and Joan to um, provide better access to care for all patients. Okay, Julian, you're here to start this rapid fire round. Okay, if somebody wants to get involved in patient advocacy, what's the best way to get started? This is a really short and sweet show. Show up. It doesn't matter where. It can be a random meeting, a support group. You can log in somewhere online, but seriously show up and instantly, I promise, you'll find family and allies. Uh, one good way to do it is we have advocacy days at the Capitol. If you don't know what those are, an organization, like probably some of the ones up here, I know we do, Arizona Families for Vaccines. We have a dedicated day at the Capitol where we uh, provide lunch or breakfast to legislators and we arrange meetings with all of our volunteers that are there with their legislators and you get to meet them and it's a really informal setting. Um, just get to have a conversation, introduce yourself. They get to hear your priorities. Um, so I think that that's a really good way to do it. It's a lot of people who've never been to the Capitol before. So I'm happy to talk with anybody and everybody about that later. 
Um, okay, so I would say a couple things. Um, one, like look for a professional um, association or organization that supports the work that you're already doing. Um, look for patient organizations and advocacy groups that are already doing work in this space. I think that one thing that we see is um, we get so energized and excited and passionate about maybe what we're dealing with and we want to start sharing our story or start a new group or coalition, but somebody's already like halfway there, so let's join them in those efforts. Um, so, and really, you know, continuing to ask those questions, um, continuing to networking, be part of different leadership trainings, leadership academies, organizations, I think is, it has really been helpful as well. And, and speaking with the legislators, give, you know, find your legislator, know which district you're in, give them a call, send them an email, let them know that this is something that's important to you. Um, to your point, they, they want to be, they want to hear from us. And they continue to hear from the same people over and over again, and that's frustrating uh, for them as well. And I think, as we've all heard today, with the patients speaking for themselves, what kind of that impact that makes, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've seen a lot of bills and legislation that have been passed by patients and patient stories, right? And we've seen that in action, and we know that that's very helpful. Um, we have a we have a, a, a slogan that we use all the time: "Nothing about us without us." Don't make don't make bills, don't make legislation, don't make policy decisions without patients at the table. Okay. Closing thoughts. Keep asking questions, keep being a voice, and know that, uh, you know, the, the folks that all got up on the microphone, you're heroes in the space. I mean, many people don't have a voice, and we're so blessed that we are able to have a voice and be able to share that voice, but there's so many that don't. They don't have the support of family members. They don't have the knowledge and education to ask those questions. They don't have, they don't have the, um, the time and the resources to see five different experts in this field, right? So knowing that there's so many other people that are struggling, that we've been impacted, and we can make a difference. We need to continue to fight that fight. Uh, something that really I think about often and is especially big thought provoking in this space right here that we're in today. So it seems like everybody here could benefit from advances in science or advances in medicine or, you know, new treatments, right? So I think it's important that we're building a culture in our country and especially in Arizona that promotes advances in science in whatever in whatever form or fashion that may be. And I think that starts with our legislature. We really need to be in contact with them and letting them know that we want advancement in our state. We want Arizona to be supportive of innovation and technology and to not go back in time. Um, so we can see it in the attacks on vaccines, vaccines that have been around for decades are now dramatically being um, attacked. And I don't think that that leads to an environment of innovation. So I would encourage everybody in this room to know your legislator, get in contact with them and tell them you don't want to go back. You want to advance, you want to progress, and you want to make Arizona a really, really great state in terms of healthcare and science and innovation. And I would encourage everyone to be empowered. Empower yourself, give yourself permission to Listen to these stories. Take this back to your daily lives. Take it back to your physician, your therapist. Mental health is important in chronic disease, something we really um, heard from some of the patients today that's inadequate. Uh, even for this university, our pharmacists, physicians, and patients all work together at the Capitol. Um, these ladies see us in, in committees often testifying or being in stakeholder groups together. So involve your care team in your needs and create your story with them. And when you do come to the Capitol with us, bring them with you. It's sometimes kind of a schedule burden, but trust me, we have doctor of the day and a lot of opportunities to hear from healthcare providers as well. And build a foundation with these incremental changes and in access to care that we all get little tiny wins at the legislature. People 15 years ago did things 20 years ago that people now don't remember. So all of this work that we do is foundational and we build upon it for the next generations. So thank you to our panelists. Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, Thank you to our patients. We appreciate you. Thank you to all of our healthcare workers and our researchers. 
We appreciate you. And since we're talking about Adams, there is an election in November. And because of that, your elected leaders want us to talk to you now more than ever. So if you go to azleg.gov, that's the, the website for the legislature, there's, you can find, just do search on Find My Legislator, and you can get their names and their phone numbers. And you call their office and you say, hi, I live in your district, and I would love to talk to you on the phone for 10 or 15 minutes. Odds are, you'll get a call back between now and November. <laughs> just for Thank you everybody for joining us for Voice of the Patient.